What's good, y'all? Elvis here. Welcome to Better Barber 101, Lesson 4. So this lesson is basically an overview on the three types of barbers or business structures for barbering. I've noticed that every barber I've ever met fits into these categories. Some not so like snugly in just one category. There's a lot of overlap between different ones. Just because you fit in one or possibly two categories does not mean that you're stuck squarely in those categories. As barbers evolve, as their business evolves, they their structure evolves as well too. So you could be in one category for like five years and then switch to another category for a year, then switch back, then switch to another the other one. Like, like your path is not linear. There's a bunch of different ways that you could jump around. And my journey is no different. I've been through all the different categories and then been through back, back through them in a different order because of just different life circumstances. Without further ado, the three types of barbers that I find are hobbyists, hustlers, and professionals. So first things first, hobbyists, are barbers that basically do this as a hobby. A lot of times they're more concerned with growing in it as an art, but they're not super pressed about making money in it, not super pressed about the lifestyle. Most of them are just artists who choose cutting hair as their medium. And that fit me when I first started. I first picked up clippers in middle school. Wouldn't consider myself a barber, I was just kind of playing with them. My, I couldn't afford haircuts because, you know, single mother household, da 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 da. So I started cutting my own hair. And of course, cutting my own hair, I was tearing myself up. But eventually I got to a point where I could do it well enough so I wouldn't get flamed up at school. But then also I had cousins who were like, we can't afford haircuts either. So just started cutting in. Cutting other people's hair is a lot easier than cutting your own. So I was cutting them for a while and I didn't take it serious. I didn't take it serious until I got to college where I didn't tell people I was cutting hair until I got to college. I had this little work study job and it wasn't really cutting it for me. So I was like, okay, how can I make some money and then do what I want to do? It's an art hobby that I have that could also make some money. Well, let me do that. That was a transition from me going from my hobbyist season to my hustler season. The hustler barber category is usually money focused in the sense of a hustler barber is somebody who sees barbering as a money making vehicle to get to wherever they're trying to go to. And there's not a problem with that, even though some people can be really mercenary about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like some people only interact with clients for the money and other things. So, I mean, most most barbers aren't really like that. They have a love of what they're doing and then it's just, there's overlap into the money aspect. But there's seasons where you're really focused on getting the money and growing the business as far as that. That was most of my career through college where Cutting hair was something that, of course, I found joy in and stuff, and I was growing in a bunch of different ways. But it was something that I ended up focusing on because of financial pressure. It was something that fed me on a creative level, but then also fed my pockets, which was good. I was in my hustler season for maybe about three, three years. I was in my junior year of college, where I kind of decided, like, actually, where I'm going with this engineering thing, like, it's fine, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I have the aptitude for it, I'll do well, I'll make money. But I like the concept of engineering more than getting paid for these problems to make so-and-so money. I knew I cared more about doing things on my terms, expressing myself creatively, having the freedom of my time and energy than getting paid. And I, and I knew that engineer was gonna pay me a lot more than barbering initially, because at this point I was, I might have been making like 15K a year. Like less than that, more than likely. It was a hobby that paid pretty well, but most of my time and energy was really going towards school anyway. So it was a side hustle. It wasn't making no real bread. I had a moment where I just realized like, yo, I don't really care for this, where this engineer is gonna take me long term, because I knew even though they pays me more for my time and energy, one day I'm gonna wake up and it's not gonna be worth it, but I can turn barbering into whatever I need it to be. Even if it's just supplemental income now, so I can grow this into something that feeds everything else. So at that point I dropped out of college and pursued barbering full time. I went to barber school and everything. And that was a transition into my professional season. A professional barber is more concerned about the lifestyle of a barber interacting with clients. It's like, of course, there's a financial aspect because this is your livelihood. It's more about the work-life balance or what I like to call work-life equilibrium of a barber or whatever you consider a better barber version of you to be. Or I wanted to get paid off my art. That's what I was most concerned about. So I put all my time and energy into that, went to barber school, got a, graduated, got licensed, been in the shop. And you no, know, I was getting to the bag and I was like, this is cool or whatever. But I realized after like a year and some change, I like, I love this. I love that like Barbara opened up all these things for me, but I don't care too much about this being the main thing that I do. I knew that I like the freedom of having barbering in my back pocket. And I like that 
it's something that feeds me in all these different ways as well as financial. But I'm so much bigger than this one thing that everybody wants me to do all the time. At the heart of it, I love this cutting hair shit and I love, I love the things that's opened up for me, but I never really cared about this being my, my identity or my, the main thing I did all the time. So I've been in my professional season for a year and some change and I realized that I love the lifestyle of being a barber, but realistically, what I consider a better barber for myself was like barbering was just the, the base of my life rather than being the main aspect of my life. It was like, I wanted it to just be the foundation. Bare minimum, I wanted to be able to make money doing my art. Then as I progressed and grew as a person, I realized that the, the ways I wanted to express myself became a lot more varied. I, I had a lot more range. There's different things I want to get into. So barber being the main aspect of my life did not apply anymore as far as where I was trying to go. I started making content, started playing with music, started playing with other things. And of course, barbering is my main source of income now, but now it's a thing that funds all the other things I'm getting into. Before I knew it, I had started to transition back into a hobbyist season rather than a professional. Hobbyist because I was doing it because I, you know, I love the art, I love how I'm growing, I love the expression that I get to do through this medium. But I didn't want it to be the main aspect of my life. I just liked how, I liked how it was integrated into everything I was doing. And that's, that's the lifestyle I really wanted. I didn't even care about being a barber. I wanted to be a tonsorial artist, but an artist overall. So around January of this year, 2023, I quietly retired. I'm gonna cut hair forever, but now I realize that I don't care about this being the main, my main source of income. I don't care this being like the main thing I do all day with my time and energy. I don't care if this is the thing that I'm having most of my social interactions through anymore. I will, I just like how it's been adding to my life and who I'm deciding to be is starting to outgrow the system that I had in place. Even though I went from more of a hobbyist focus perspective to a hustler to a professional, the whole time I've always been a hobbyist. Like I knew as soon as I stopped loving this, I was gonna stop. Clippers down, hands down, forget all that. That was the thing that also helped me develop my clientele and develop how I wanted my business to really look like through the different stages. When I was a hobbyist, I cared about getting reps in just so I could get better as a, as a craft. And when I became a hustler, it was more about how can I leverage my well consciousness and grow my money making skills to extract more monetary value through this art, through this craft. Then when I moved into my professional, like I already built the skills that made me appreciate this at a hobby level. And I built the skills that made me appreciate this at a hustler level. So at the professional level, I just had to tweak a few skills so I could adapt to the lifestyle of a barber, being a full-time barber for real. Now I'm going back to the hobbyist stage, but I still retain elements of the hustler season and the professional season. So even though I consider myself a hobbyist and I'm retired or whatever, I'm just as thorough as a hustler barber and I'm just as thorough as a professional barber as far as my skill set. I want to have clients that I thoroughly enjoy their company and um, it's not me just trading a service for the bread. It's because I honed so many skills in my professional season and because I went through all the different seasons and, and understood what aspects of each different season that I liked and that fit into my life for real. Now, the clientele that I have currently reflects all that. There are people that I personally rock with on a friend level. Like if we hung out outside of the chair, we'd be friends. And there are also people that pay me my price at the price that I dictate, but also there are people that have valuable interactions between us. I feel like I'm growing as a person with all the people that sit in my chair. But to make those changes and to get those kind of clients and get those kind of results, realistically, I, underst I had to understand what kind of person I am, what I really wanted out of my business, tweak the business to fit the structure that fit that, and then I got the clients that fit into that business but also resonate with the person that I was. So it all comes down to knowledge of self, understanding who you are because I have a lot of barbers that are like, oh, I want clients that pay me like you. And I'm like, well, you gotta be somebody like me to get paid like me. The skills that people appreciate that made me a barber, the, a lot of them came from engineering things. A lot of them came from the artistic things I go, I get into outside of the, the shop. They, they get into a lot of like the spiritual development that I've made for myself as a person that was relevant for me specifically. Even if you had the exact same setup, even if you cut the exact same way, even if you generally said the same things, you couldn't get the same results because, because my results in my 
process are, are authentic to who I am. Whoever you decide to be and however you decide to grow through the different stages of your career are going to reflect that. You're gonna take the best parts of you from each season and integrate that into your own sauce. So you might end up being a hobbyist, professional, hustler, then professional, and then you then you become some type of thing of a hybrid. Cutting hair could just be a bag move you do for your old, for your bros. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like you don't care about cutting hair, but it's like if you want a haircut, this is what I charge for it. I'm doing other things. If you want to pay me for this? Here it is. And you could be something of a hobbyist hustler. You know what I'm saying? Like you can mix and match this as much as you want. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no right or wrong way to do barbering. It's just better barbering for you. I feel like I probably should have touched on it more in the resource management money section. But since we're talking about business structure, I do want to kind of touch on taxes and stuff. At a hobby level, most people don't worry about taxes. You know what I'm saying? Even at a professional level, a lot of people just don't be on the up and up with their taxes. That is a big mistake in my opinion because as a self-employed person, you are you have access to a lot of tax write-offs. Anything that I use for my business, my phone bill, anything I spend on tools, supplies, transportation, sometimes even food. And these are all things that I get to write off on my taxes and that save me money. But most barbers I talk to are really scared of taxes because they don't wanna pay anything. They don't really wanna deal with it. But you are doing yourself a disservice because when you don't pay your taxes, you have no proof of income. So it's harder to get a proof of things if you wanna prove that you make money. But it's also in your best interest to file taxes appropriately because if you're spending money on your business, you're leaving a lot of money on the table if you're not saying anything about it. For example, when I was about to go back to A&T for the second time, when I was actually in the middle of barber school, I was trying to go back to school, but they kept trying to give me like out-of-state tuition. Keep in mind, I've been in North Carolina since sixth grade, so I was like, y'all got me fucked up. But so I had to file my taxes for them to give me in-state tuition. And I was really hesitant about that because as a barber, I'm thinking like, shoot, I don't have to pay money on the money that I made for myself. But then also, because I'm a barber, I'm not thinking about saving money for taxes. So I was afraid of whatever they were going to charge me. I'm not, just not knowing that I probably don't have enough for it. But I had no choice but to file my taxes. Just, so I kind of just did it on TurboTax. And I keep track of all my expenses because that's something you want to do. Yeah, so at that point, I was making about 30K while I was in barber school. Keep in mind, with barber school, I'm getting paid for less than half the haircuts I'm doing. So I'm slaving all year to make 30K. But you know, that's, that was a due I had to pay for that, that season. So I went through TurboTax and you know, I put in all my stuff. I didn't even put write-offs in yet because I wanted to see how much money I'd have to pay in taxes just without write-offs. Before write-offs, it said I owed 5K in taxes. Obviously, I did not have 5K. So I was thinking, damn, I'm like, that's, maybe I'm not going to do this tax thing. Let me just see what it looks like. And I put in all my tax write-offs. Keep in mind, barbering is something that's really fun for me. So most of the time, if I'm spending something, so I'm spending money on something barber related, it's something that I think is a toy. You know what I'm saying? I consider it a toy. It, it gives me some kind of joy. So when I splurge on myself, it's usually about my business. So that's kind of, that was, of course, that's a thing to pay attention to. Because if you're spending a bunch of money on clothes and things that you, I don't, you might be able to write off clothes. Talk to, talk to a professional. I'm only certified to cut hair. <laughs> yeah, like if you're spending money on a bunch of things that like don't relate to your business, this, these tax, these write-offs do not apply. But everything I do happens to tie back to my business, which is really convenient. But also I was very intentional about that. So. After I put in all my write-offs, accurately, I'm not talking, I didn't fudge any numbers. I wanted to see exactly what I was gonna be dealing with. Tell me why the taxes I owed rolled from over 5,000 down to $179. After that, I was not trying to hear anybody tell me bullshit about taxes. If you are an entrepreneur, the whole tax system, if you do it correctly, is set up for you to win and take advantage of it. And of course, like taxes and LLC stuff was more stuff was stuff I got more into in my professional season because as a hustler, like I mean, I, I filed taxes. I filed taxes way back when when I was going was barber school and college. But that I didn't need an LLC. You technically don't need an LLC to file your taxes and stuff. I say an LLC is a bigger step. I would say more in a professional direction because if you're if you're not planning on this being your main thing, it doesn't make sense to it doesn't make sense to register all this stuff with the government realistically. Just like I said, like the different elements of the different chapters you're in as far as your, your business structure, a lot of different elements from the different structures carry over. So like for my professional season where I established my LLC and all these other things, damn near everything I do artistically ties back to my haircutting business. So now when I'm getting into content, 
All the, the bread I spent on equipment, tax write-offs. Anything I spent on marketing, tax write-offs. Money I spent on merch, tax write-offs. Paying for things that are tax write-offs and then writing them off on your taxes. So it's just giving somebody money and let's say you buy the item and now you just have the item. When it's a tax write-off, is effectively just taking the money from one pocket, putting it into another, and also getting the item. Tax write-offs is a way of saving money that you spent, realistically. But of course, like I said before, consult with a tax professional because I'm only certified to cut hair and I dropped out of college twice. I think I'm pretty smart, but I'm not the person to go to for all the answers. But as a self-employed person, something to understand, you should not expect to get a tax refund. A tax refund is just an indicator that you pay too much in taxes and the government is giving you money back. Like realistically, it's it would be an ideal situation to not get any money back because you gave them what they needed. Approaching taxes is a whole different experience coming from a self-employed person. But also, keep in mind, I'm not a tax professional and I don't have kids. I have dependents, but I don't file them on my taxes. You feel me? They just get money spent on them so I'm recommending go find what's reasonable relevant counsel for you and see how you can make your your business structure better for the for where you're trying to go in the future it's because if I didn't file my taxes and allowed me to have proof of income I wouldn't have got approved my apartment I wouldn't have got approved for multiple cars I wouldn't have lines of credit you feel me these are all things that I can leverage to increase the quality of my life as well as the quality of my business so if you're leaving these things on the table then you're doing yourself a disservice but that was lesson four, three types of barbers slash business structure. All right, appreciate y'all watching. That's all for this lesson. But in this next lesson, I'm gonna touch on what I consider debatably the number one important aspect of your barbering business, networking.